Oh hey, how's it going? Welcome to What the Math. I'm glad you're back. So let's talk about graphing calculators. Today I'll be giving you a tour and basically teach you how to use a graphic ca graphing calculator just to graph a little simple graph and then find a solution to a problem. Uh, specifically, I'll be using this beautiful TI-84 Plus Silver Edition emulator. And I'm gonna be showing you what I'm, what keys I'm pressing by showing you this little box right here. But before that, let's, uh, let's look at the actual calculator, what each of these buttons kind of means, or in essence, what, how is it laid, laid out? What are these buttons for? All right. So let's look at the structure. So on the bottom right here, you have all these crazy buttons. And that's basically your typical scientific calculator, similar to the one you used in middle school. Then on the second level right here, starting with math button and then the uh, negative exponent button, you have the adv advanced function keys, including things like sine, cosine, um, exponents. Uh, then you have editing keys, and these are really important because these allow you to uh, modify things, to, um, to shift between different buttons. And uh, the last row right here, these are your graphing keys. That's where you, um, that's where you deal with all your graph and uh, all your graphical things that will then be displayed on the screen. And of course, the last part, the most important part is the screen of jig, as I call it. Basically the display that uh, you get to use to display all kinds of graphs. All right. So that's what the structure is. Now let's talk about some of the more important buttons here. So these two buttons right here, second and alpha, these are basically kind of like shift or command buttons on PC and Mac. Essentially, they shift between different functions for each key. So for example, if I wanted to uh, go into graphing mode, so let's turn the uh, calculator on. I'm going to reset this. If I wanted to go into graphing mode, I would press graph. See, there is a graph. Now, what if I want to go into table mode? I click second graph. Second graph. Second graph. Oh, there we go. It, it took a while. Um, so second graph will show me uh, an actual table. As you can see, the blue here says table. Now, if I were to press alpha graph, it would give me something completely different. It would give me something called F5. I don't even know what that is. I actually don't even know what that is. So basically, that's another function that doesn't seem to work right now because I think I need to do something else for that. But basically, there's a green alpha button. It's, it's for like really advanced functions. I honestly have, uh, cannot remember when I used it. Um, I did use it as sometimes, but not for anything that we'll be doing in, a, in the IB math studies. So mostly you need the second blue button to shift between different functions. Now these buttons right here are super important, especially this button right here. And this is where, this is where you enter your different functions. So if you just click on, let's just go back for a second. I'm going to quit this using second mode. And if you go into this, it will show you, um, your Y function. So essentially the function that you enter. So for example, if I were to enter X squared, so which is a quadratic function, you would have to press, th th uh, these are your uh, variables right here. So there's X and then squared. If you remember, this is from the previous video, X squared. So this is my quadratic function, very basic quadratic function. Now, and I want to graph it. So all I have to do is click on graph and there you go. This is my beautiful quadratic function. Um, if you want two functions, you go back to the Y thingy, go down and then enter another one. So let's enter, uh, I'll just say X, uh, X cubed. Let's do X cubed. So now we have two functions, go back to graph and now you have two functions. So one is X squared, one is X cubed. So that's how you plot things. If you want to clear this, you just uh, press the clear button and then you can go back and clear this as well. And it will erase everything. And then you go back to, uh, having nothing. Um, let's try something a little bit more complex. Let's try to plot the quadratic function and then take a look at some of the values that we get. So here's my quadratic function. Now what I can do is if I click on second and then graph or essentially table, this is a table, it will give me the table values for each X and Y. So for example, at X equals 10, my Y is 100. At X equals 20, my Y is 400. So this is how you can actually find X and Y values for uh, for your graph. There is an actually easier way to do this, but I'll show it to you in a second when we do a little problem. Another super important button is actually right here and it's called window. So if you go into this, this will let you choose uh, the scale for your window. And this is really important because uh, graphing calculators, they're not really good at finding values that are outside of the window bounds. So you need to change your window sometimes. So for example, I want to zoom out of this. 
So uh, one way of doing this is to click, click on zoom, but we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it a more precise way. For example, I want to see what is my Y value at Y when it's 100. So you go down to Y max, which is the maximum val value for Y, and you change it to 100. So this is Y at 100. Now I click on graph again, and as you can see, now you see the quadratic function with Y at 100 right here. So this is how you change the window mode. And this is really important. A lot of students forget how to use this, but this is really, really important. So I'm going to go through this again when we do our problem, which we'll do right now. Let's actually do it right now. Let's talk about a little problem. A little problem that we might have encountered in real life. All right, imagine an awesome hypothetical situation. You find a magic lamp, you rub it, genie comes out and goes, okay, listen, you have two choices. Choice number one, I give you a million dollars. Choice number two, I give you one dollar, but it doubles every day for a month. What do you take? So would you rather take a million dollars right away or take one dollar now and then have it double every day for 30 days? So let's find out using an exponential function. So we're going to go ahead and try to plot this on the graph using exponential functions. And if you haven't figured this out yet, this right here, the second function is actually 2 to the power of x. And we're looking for x at 30. So let's find out what we get for this particular function. y equals 2 to the power of x. All right, so first step is we need to enter our function and y equals... 2 to the power of x. Next is right here, if you remember. It's the button right next to the green alpha button. And this is our function. So we're going to press enter. And then look at the graph. And oh, and I forgot to change the window, but this is good too. It will show you what the graph looks like. Now, this might be good, but I kind of wanted to be a little bit zoomed in. So I'm going to change my y max to maybe 50 just to see a little bit better. And then I'm going to change my Y minimum uh, to 50 as well. So it's a little bit in the middle. So let's see what this looks like. And you can see that it's a little bit more accurate, but not accurate enough. I just, I really want to see the origin. So I'm going to zoom in even more. I'm going to go to minus, minus 10. Let's go to minus 10 for now. This is actually your original value. And let's see what this looks like. Oh, this is actually not minus 10. Minus 10 would be something else. Minus 10 will be this. All right. So this is the original values that you get when you reset your calculator. And this is what it looks like. This is an exponential function. So it's right here and goes dramatically up. So that's what it looks like. Now, one way of solving this problem is to, like I showed you before, is to click on second. Let me just clear the, um, the key presses here. Click on second, second, and then go into graph. And then we'll show you a table. And here you can basically kind of go through these values and find the X, which is 30 at 30 days. Remember that X represents days here, 30 days. And then you look at your Y and it gives you a value for Y. So this is the value for Y. But let's not spoil this fun yet. So let's actually do it differently. Imagine that you just want to find the value of X. So one way of doing this is to look at your graph. And then what you can do is you can actually trace. If you click on trace, you have this little cross thingy and you can then move left and right to trace your, uh, okay, you can't even see it anymore. Trace your cursor to where you want it to be. So for example, right now we are almost at six. You can't really see it. Let me change the window a little bit. I'm going to change the window back to a hundred. Let's change the window to a hundred. Then we're going to click on trace again. And let's look at what our value for Y is when X is X is seven. So after one week, how much money would you have if you start with a dollar that doubles every day? So six, six point three, six point six, six point eight, almost seven. So this is almost seven. So you're going to have about hundred thirty dollars after one week. So that's that's good, but not a million dollars, right? Now, uh, you can obviously trace all the way down uh, up to 30, but that will take you a while, especially if you're looking for a large value. So let's do it the smart way. What we're going to do is we're going to use a calc function, which is right here, right above trace. So what you do is you click second trace, or basically this is calc. Let me do this again. I'll show it to you from, from here. So second trace. And then you have these different cool functions here. So there's a derivative here, intersect, maximum, minimum, zero, but we're actually looking for value. You click on value, you click enter value, and it will ask you for what X do you want? 
And we want x at 30, 30 days, right? After a month, x30. And it gave us an invalid error. So why do you think that is? As I mentioned before, this is because our window is too small. So I need to fix this by increasing our window size. So we're going to go to into window and I'm going to increase this to a really, really large number. I'm going to decrease this to like 1 million, 1 million, a million dollars, right? We'll try it. We're aiming for a million dollars. So we're going to increase it to a million. Sometimes you may actually experiment with this, try to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. So let's go into calc again. So where's my, oh, I need to graph this first and going to go into, oh no, oh no, this is what I wanted. I wanted to do my graph. All right. So graph it first, let it calculate the values. It's going to calculate. It's going to take a little bit longer than usual because we actually have a very, very large graph right now. So let's wait. All right. I was being silly. I just realized it was actually because my X value was too low. So I'm going to change this to about 20 uh, and see what that happens. I, it was actually, it was already graphed. I just couldn't see it uh, because my window was not properly set up. So 20 is too low. So let's go. Oh, there we go. If it's 20, you can kind of see it here. Let's go to maybe 40. Let's check 40. Uh, so playing around with the window mode is really important. Really experiment with this. Uh, make sure you understand what's going on. So there's a minimal X value and maximum X value and same for Y, um, Y min and Y max. Uh, so there you go. This is our exponential graph. Now, right now we're just trying to find it at 30 days. So uh, I'm going to clear this second calc, go to value, select X at 30. So 30 days and it gives me my answer in scientific format. So essentially it's 1.07 uh, times 10 to the power of nine. If you don't remember your scientific notation, um, we're going to look through this again, but essentially it's over a million. So uh, just to see what the actual number is, let's go back into the table, go down to 30 days and this actually showed us the actual number without the scientific notation. So it's just over a million. It's sort of like a million and seventy three thousand dollars. So seventy three thousand dollars extra if you wait for a month rather than getting a million right away. Uh, so that kind of solves the problem for us. Now, just to repeat all this. So basically start with this. Then you plot your graph by let's do let's do uh, just a normal quadratic. Um, by pressing enter, then you press graph and you have your graph that will show up somewhere here and it won't show up because my window is setting is basically it's different and this is set for exponential. So go back into your window setting, always go back to window if you don't see anything because that's probably where the problem is. Um, and just to explain it to you, um, basically this is what window mode means. If I want to increase, if I just want to see what's um, on the bottom here, if I want to see more of the bottom, I'll go into the window look at my X min right here and change it from minus 10 to let's just say minus 20. And I look at it again and oops, I did the wrong thing. This is actually, this is X min. Uh, go change this back into 10. Now look at my Y min, Y min. So there we go, Y min. And as you can see, this increased here. So X min is this, Y min is this. This is obviously X max. So if I increase my X max, it will go right or not because I changed it to two should have done 20. Uh, there you go. Increase this. And now if I want to want it to go back up, I have to increase my Y max to 20 as well. And it will go back up. So that's how uh, window mode works. You also have these little scales here. That's basically the little notches that you see these little notches. You can change them as well. They're not as important because that just basically to help you visualize things. Uh, but these values are very important. Then you have table, table mode, which shows you all of the X and Y values. Then you have calc, which helps you calculate a value of X, uh, sorry, a value of Y at certain X. So if I want to find out what this is at X equals 20, it gives me my Y, at, uh, my Y is 400. So 20 square is 400. All right. So that's really the essentials for how to graph using graphing calculator, specifically TI-84 plus Silver Edition. Hopefully this was helpful. And if not, we'll come back to this and we'll go through this again. Thank you for watching and bye bye and good luck.